The Amazing Race Season 35 has officially completed the race around the world. And joining me now are runner-ups and best friend duo Joel and Garrett. Guys, so good to speak with you. How are you? Oh, hello. Hey, nice to speak with you also. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Doing so awesome. Well, congrats first and foremost on your success on the season of Amazing Race. You guys did a fantastic job. My first question for you, I want to know a little bit more about the history of your all's friendship. So we've been friends for over 20 years. We met in the Army, just happened to be assigned to the same platoon in the Army. And we just hit it off from there. We have a lot in common. We gravitated towards each other because uh, we didn't necessarily have a ton in common with a lot of the other soldiers, but mm -hmm. we did have a lot in common among ourselves. And we just became friends right away. We were the same rank. We liked to mess around. We, you know, I, I don't know. We. Just the jokes we'd make with each other and, and the way we would play pranks on each other. It just, I don't know, we were, we we're just best friends from the start. Yep. Yeah, we, absolutely. Go ahead, sorry. Our platoon, our platoon, or our whole, actually, our whole brigade got deployed to Iraq um, soon after we met. Uh, we'd already become good friends, but now we're going on this adventure together. And uh, only a few months into the 18 month deployment, he got hurt yep. and he got sent back home. So now I'm on the deployment with my platoon, but not with Smythe. And uh, we we missed out on an adventure there, but we're so glad we got to do this adventure yes. now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You had a whole other adventure waiting for you a little bit later in life. So, guys, tell me, why did you want to be on The Amazing Race? We've been fans of the show for years. Strasser watched it when he was in Iraq. That was when you first started watching it, right? Yeah, back in 2005, it was season eight, the family season that we that I was able to watch while I was in Iraq, and I was I loved it, and I was thinking. Someday I'm going to be on this show. <laughs> and then my wife and I also loved the show, and we, we watched it. And, and then Strasser was talking about how he was talking to another platoon mate that um, he was trying to get him to go on the race with him. And I'm like, what are you thinking? Me and you need to do the race <laughs> together. Because he speaks French, I speak Spanish. And I'm like, we can get along in a lot of places in the world. And so, you know, it was, what, 15 years later after we talked about it that we finally applied. And and we didn't go to a French or Spanish speaking country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you, we could have done if we but you still made it to second place. So there was still something good in the cards for you. You guys, True. you spoke so highly of your families throughout the entire season. How proud are they of you? And what did it mean to go back and kind of share this experience with them? Our fam, gosh, our family is, is behind everything. Yep. Our, there, I mean, there's no other motivation, no other driving force for us. We, you saw that they snuck father's day cards into our backpacks yeah. when we left and we got to open those and read those on father's day that was so important and so so powerful for us but for, to have them in our corner have them yeah cheering us on that's everything well from the very beginning you know we had talked about applying for the amazing race for years and years and i i don't know if our wives thought oh they're just it's all talk you know they're not going to do anything when we finally got serious about it i thought you know i better talk to my wife first we've got five kids you know mm. so if we go on the race She's home alone dealing with these five kids. We've got family nearby, but, but you know, she's got a, a lot to take on. And so that was the first thing I did is I called her up and I was like, hey, Strauss and I are talking about it again. What, what's your serious thought if we did apply? She said, I think, oh, I get so emotional when I talk about my family. Jeez. Aww. She was like, um, she just said, I think it'd be awesome. I think you guys should do it. And his wife, same thing. Nothing they, but support. Just very supportive the whole time. And I, they, they're just amazing. Yeah, well, it's been so apparent the entire time how much love you guys have for your families. You know, I want to know this, too. You guys kind of deemed yourself as the underdogs throughout the season. So what's it like going through this show, kind of being the underdogs, if you will? On one hand, you're, people don't... Uh, <laughs> you don't have a lot to live up to. Yeah, people aren't, don't feel threatened <laughs> by you. They're willing to work with you because... I think a lot of people would like to see underdogs go far sure. because they're not threatened by them. And so, in a sense, I know that the the strategy between teams, I know there's U-turns and things, but it's not, like, nearly as much as, say, like a survivor type thing. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely there, and it's definitely happening. We're talking, and we're making impressions. And I, it helped us a lot. We, we made so many friends during this show. That's the other thing is, at the beginning of these shows, you always hear people say, I didn't come here to make friends. I came here to win a million dollars. Well... We got more than a million dollars worth of friends out of this. Aww. All of the cast is such good friends oh, with yeah. us now. Like, there's not a single stinker in this cast. <laughs> we love them all, and it's it, we're like a family. 
Yeah, I love hearing that. And um, some of your other castmates said the same thing to me earlier about the cast and you all as well. So that's really incredible to hear. What would you guys say was maybe your biggest hurdle throughout the season? Dancing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> going, going into the show, we knew we weren't dancers. We probably should have taken some lessons or something, but... It's the one thing we but... didn't prepare for. <laughs> I think we were so... We had such low uh, opinions of our dancing skills. We didn't even think we could get yeah. better or something because well, I well and and we, that was the the only argument we ever had is who would do the dancing challenges and neither one of us wanted to, <laughs> and so I think our hope was just that the other one would get picked to do the dances. <laughs> sure. the main thing. So he did the pot the balancing uh, pots dance, uh -huh. and there had been a, a, a dance even in Thailand with the swords at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So we were very hopeful that between the swords dance and the pots dance that there would be there no be more dancing. More. And then they went through the possibly hardest the dance most challenge difficult dance ever. that the show's ever had. And I was lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, you made the uh, made it through both the dance uh, challenges, and you obviously made it to the final, so you were just fine. Maybe it was a hurdle, but you still overcame it. Now, you guys kept a genuinely strong lead in the final leg. Did you expect that that's how it would turn out? Throughout the race, we struggled a lot more with roadblocks than with detours. Mm. Anytime we had a chance to work together, we did really well together. In a lot of the the detours where we could work well to get or work together, I think we were even faster than a lot of the teams in a lot of those challenges. And so, in a scramble situation where we're working together the whole time, we felt really confident. We felt good, and I think it showed. I mean, we we knocked out each of those challenges relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that's how we established that lead to start with. If only we had another hour, hour and a half lead, <laughs> we might have been fine. We, we only needed a two or minute lead. That's all we came short. Well, that's my next question, you guys. We have to get into that last mistake on the final memorization challenge. You guys were absolutely killing this entire leg. As I just said, you were killing the memorization challenge, and there was just one or two small changes you needed to make that you were struggling to figure out. How often do you replay that mistake in your head, and kind of what's the, what's the emotions of all that like? I think a better question is how often do we not read yeah. that? Because mm. Every day of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk about when you went into the store with your- Oh son. yeah, that's the, I forgot about that. So when we first got home, um, my son needed to get some new running shoes. And so we, I took him to a sporting goods store. We're walking through the store looking for shoes and I walk past a wall of kayaks. Oh no. And something inside of me wanted to tear that wall down and just tear those kayaks in half. And I didn't know what it was. And then all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, that last challenge did some trauma inside of me. So now I'm very much pro canoe and anti kayak. Uh, there, hey, there you go. You know, whatever it takes. All right, you guys, my final question. You did so well this season. Would you return to the Amazing Race to compete again? In a heartbeat. Yes, we would love to return. I it. would do it again, even without a million dollars prize on the line. I would yeah. it, it was it was an amazing experience. I would do it for a ten million dollar prize. Well, yeah, that too. That would actually be better. <laughs> but either way, I'm in. It, yeah, it was amazing. We would love to go back. All right, good to know. Joel Garrett, thank you both so much. Congrats on a great run on this season of the Amazing Race. We hope to see you soon. Thank you so Thanks. much.